Hi everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome back to the early show. Uh, my name is Pastor Jinai and uh, thank you for joining me on today's live stream. Um, please bear with me as I get things started up over here um, because I'm not in my usual location. So um, yeah, <laughs> um, if there are any difficulties in terms of I don't know, um, sound or anything, please let me know in the comment section of this live stream and then we will um, sort it out together. Um, so yeah, please. Hi, good morning, Eddie. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, so yeah, as I get things set up, please let me know how you're doing. How have you been in the last couple of weeks? Um, as things have slowly been getting back to this new normal, um, how have you guys been coping? What have you been up to? What is the first thing that you did when the lockdown restrictions were lifted here in Malaysia? Um, what, where is the first place that you traveled to when interstate travel ban was lifted here in Malaysia? Uh, good morning, Andre. I'm very sorry if I mispronounced your name, uh, but thank you very much for joining this morning. Um, yeah, so when lockdown restrictions were lifted, uh, interstate restriction, travel restrictions were lifted here in Malaysia, where's the first place you traveled to and uh, who are the first people that you saw? Um, let me know in the comment section of this live stream whilst we wait for a couple more people to join us. Um, as usual, my plan is to keep this sharing on the shorter side so that we can get through as many of your questions as possible. And um, so if you guys have any questions, please stick them up in the comment section of this live stream and uh, I'll try my best to get to them. And if I don't, if I'm not able to respond to them during the live stream, then um, I will respond after the fact, all right? Um, also, I would like to say a big thank you to the sponsors of today's sharing. Um, first of whom is Buni, who would like to dedicate their contribution towards um, the speedy recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much, Buni. Um, also, um, good morning, Alim. Uh, Alim, hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining us from London. Um, also, sponsor Jacqueline, who would like to dedicate their contribution that um, all may be well and happy. And a very supportive, anonymous uh, sponsor who has been supporting the show for a very, very long time, who would like to dedicate their contribution uh, towards all beings liberation from suffering and towards the attainment of compassion, wisdom and true happiness. So thank you guys very much for your continued support of these programs, not just mine, but everyone else's as well. Now, ordinarily at this point, I will make a request, at this juncture, I will make a request for um, support, sponsorship of the show. But I also have an announcement to make today, which is that Today's live stream, today's video is the last early show episode for this year, for the foreseeable future, who knows. So um, thank you guys very much for um, your continued support of this program over the last year. Um, it has been very encouraging and I hope that um, it has been beneficial, helpful somehow, um, and that you've taken away something from the shows. I have enjoyed making these videos for you, and I have enjoyed having you on these live streams, uh, and I have enjoyed answering your questions, your very insightful questions, which actually show that you've been reading, that you've been learning, that you've been studying, and engaging with the teachings, thinking about the teachings, contemplating, and coming up with some fantastic questions. So I have really enjoyed ha doing these videos and um, having you guys on the live streams, all right? So speaking of live stream, good morning, King Hoy. Good morning, Jillian. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for joining us on the last episode of The Early Show. All right, so yeah, speaking of live stream today, what I actually want to talk about is um, a quote that our Guru, His Eminence, Sam Chukur Rinpoche, shared with us um, very often. And um, it's a quote that um, Rinpoche's guru, Rinpoche's own guru, His Eminence, Kenso Rinpoche, Jampa Yeshe, actually told our Rinpoche. And uh, His Eminence, Kenso Rinpoche, Jampa Yeshe, was the abbot of one of the great um, Tibetan monasteries known as Gandin Shatse Monastery, um, G-A-D-E-N-S-H-A-R-T-S-E, Gandin Shatse Monastery. So His Eminence, Kenzo Rinpoche Jamba Yeshi said, um, why is it that you are surprised when things go wrong? Um, it is the nature of samsara. This is samsara. In fact, you should be surprised when things go right. All right, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about that quote. As Buddhists, um, as spiritual seekers, as spiritual practitioners, um, why is it that we get upset when we, when life is full of problems? Why is it that we react? Why is it that we fight? What is happening in front of us? Why is it that we protest? Why is it that we resist? 
Um, why is it that we think, oh, things shouldn't be this way, life shouldn't be this way. I've done everything possible. Why are there so many problems that keep coming up over and over again? Why is it that my life never, <clears throat> excuse me, why is it that my life never seems to get any easier? Why is it that my life never seems to improve? Why is it that I'm constantly coming up with obstacles over and over again? All right. So <clears throat> now, if we're being completely honest, when I ask all of these questions, why do we get upset? Why do we resist? Why do we fight? Why do we protest? And so on. Um, I'm not just asking you guys, all right? I'm going to be very, very honest here. I'm not just asking you guys because even I get upset. Um, even I react. Even I get annoyed and I get surprised uh, when things don't go well or when things don't go according to plan, all right? Honestly speaking, I get very annoyed when things don't go according to plan because you set everything up very nicely. You set up a schedule. You've done this, that, and the other. And you've prepared for the worst case scenario and still things go wrong. So yeah, I get upset, I do react. Um, all of us do. Now, why is it that we get surprised? It may not necessarily be the answer that um, you want to hear, but it's the truth. And the truth is that we get upset and we get surprised when there are so many problems in life because we aren't practicing the Dharma and we aren't applying the teachings. If we know the Dharma, and if we are applying the teachings, then we would never be upset, we would never get annoyed, we would never be irritated when there are problems and when there are obstacles and when there are issues that crop up in life because we would have realized and understood the basis and the causes for these problems and these issues to arise. And we would know that there is no point in getting upset and we would know that it's actually counterproductive to get upset and to get irritated and to react. There's no point. But having said that, we still do react from time to time. So before I continue, what I actually do want to say is that um, <clears throat> just because we are not applying the teachings all of the time, what Ramaji told us is that that does not make us bad and that does not make us evil. It just means that we are people who are trying our best. It just means that we are people who are practicing. We're not people who have accomplished but we are people who are practicing, we are people who are trying our best, we are people who are putting in effort. We are practitioners, all right? So each time we fail, each time we get upset, we shouldn't think, oh, I got upset that this problem arose in my life. I reacted when this problem arose in my life. So since I reacted, since I got upset, therefore it is, there's no point, there's no longer any point in me trying to hold my temper. There's no longer any point in me trying to control my mind because I already failed. We shouldn't think like that. What Rinpoche actually said is that <clears throat> if we fail that one time, it doesn't mean that we have to keep failing forever. It doesn't mean that we have to keep failing over and over again. For example, just because today we may have reacted in anger to someone does not mean that we have to fall into anger and does not mean that we have to react with anger over and over again. You just reacted with, with anger once. The next time that situation comes about again, try your best to hold your temper. All right, so just because you have failed once does not mean you have to keep failing over and over again. It doesn't mean that you have to give up. It just means that we weren't successful that one time. And so we should try again, over and over again, until we finally get it right. All right. So before we continue, I just want to oh, see messages coming in. So I just want to say hi. Hi, Ka Kawe. Um, Hi, Jerry. Hi. Thank you guys so much for joining me this morning on the last episode of the early show. All right. So um, how do we deal with the fact? Uh, how do we deal with being surprised that life is so full of problems? First of all, we have to understand that we are not, not enlightened. We are unenlightened. We are not accomplished. We are not attained. That means that we are and that, together with that, what it means is that we're not living in some kind of celestial abode or some kind of celestial paradise like Kachara paradise, right? Now, in places like Kachara paradise, uh, what Rumichi actually described to us is that these places are so wonderful because everything in a celestial abode like Kachara paradise is geared towards the practice of Dharma, is geared towards our spiritual development. Um, Kachara paradise is the celestial abode of a tantric Buddha by the name of Vajra Yogini. And it's, the, it's what our organization is named after. All right? So 
first of all, recognize the fact that we're not enlightened, we're not attained, and we're not living in some kind of celestial abode, celestial paradise like a child paradise, where everything is geared towards our spiritual practice. What Rumshi explained is that um, even in a place like a child paradise, when the wind blows, it carries with it the sound of Dharma through the trees, so that all we're receiving all the time is Dharma. We're not living in a place like that. Where we are living is we are living in samsara. We're living in a place that's full of angry, full of jealous, full of bitter, envious, difficult, strange, unique, weird, interesting, different kind of people um, who all have their own agendas, who all have their own traumas, and who have all and who all have their own experiences. And so, of course, when we're living in a place like samsara, where there are all these people who, including ourselves, who are struggling with our anger, struggling with our depression, struggling with our jealousy, struggling with all of these things. Of course, at some point, we will have problems because, of course, at some point, we won't always see eye to eye with all the people who are around us. Of course, there will be conflict. Of course, there will be clashes. And of course, there will be people disagreeing with one another. Of course, there will be disharmony. Of course, there will be problems because we're not enlightened. All right. So how do we deal with the fa- how do we deal with being surprised that life is so full of problems? First, by realizing it and understanding that we are unenlightened. Second, how we deal with being surprised that life is so full of problems is by understanding and realizing the fact that just because we are in the Dharma does not mean. I'm so sorry. It does not mean that all of our problems and our obstacles and our difficulties will instantly go away. All right. How can our problems and difficulties and issues and challenges and all of these things suddenly disappear just because we have taken refuge and just because we say, I'm Buddhist, I've taken refuge in the Buddha and I'll follow the Buddha's teachings. How is it that just because we've taken refuge, instantly all of our problems will disappear overnight? How is it that just because we've taken refuge, that instantly overnight we never have a single problem ever again? We have to meditate and we have to think. Why am I experiencing these problems? Why am I experiencing difficulties in my life over and over again? I'm experiencing these problems and difficulties in my life over and over again because in the past, I've created the karma to do so. And therefore, I'm experiencing the results of my karma now. I've created the causes to experience these problems and these difficulties in the past. So we need to meditate and think like that. So us becoming Buddhist, doesn't mean that we are automatically safe, doesn't mean that we're instantly safe, and doesn't mean that we will definitely never experience suffering anymore. Us becoming Buddhist doesn't mean that suddenly all of the karmic causes for our problems have instantly disappeared. Us becoming a Buddhist, you becoming a Buddhist, you being interested in the Buddha's teachings, you pursuing um, or studying the Dharma, practicing the Dharma, and taking refuge actually means that now we have an opportunity to do something about the problems and the difficulties that keep coming up in life over and over again. What opportunities are those? The first opportunity that we have after we've taken refuge is that we have the opportunity to do something about the karma that we've created in the past. So whether that is a purification practice Um, for example, by doing a lot of prostrations, or for example, by reciting or engaging in retreats of uh, Dodi Shukden uh, confession prayer. Or whether that means um, we get to create merit by engaging practices such as making offerings to create more conducive conditions for ourselves in the future. By us taking refuge and by us becoming Buddhist, the first opportunity that we get to do something about the problems and the difficulties that arise in our life is we get to do something about the karma that we've created that are resulting in the experiences that we're having now. The second opportunity that we get is that we stop creating further karma by reacting to the results of our previously created karma. What do I mean by that? That means that whatever problems um, we're having now if we apply the Dharma to them, to resolving these problems, then we won't create further karma through our reaction. And that's very important because it means that instead of us getting angry, 
it means that instead of us getting jealous that um, someone else at work gets a promotion over and above us and we don't feel that they deserve it, um, instead of us getting angry or jealous in a situation like that, we learn to rejoice for them. As difficult as it may be, we learn to rejoice for them. So what that means is that we don't create further karma from that anger or from that jealousy, um, which will which we will experience the results of in the future. So let me do a short recap. Um, how do we deal with being surprised that life is so full of problems? The first thing is by realizing and understanding that we are not enlightened, that we are unenlightened. And therefore, by virtue of the fact that we are unenlightened and living in samsara, we are going to run into people, situations that are disharmonious, that have conflict, that have clashes, that we will have disagreements with. Things won't always be rosy because we are not enlightened. Second thing is, how we deal with being surprised by life's problems is by realizing, understanding the fact that just because we are Buddhist, just because we have taken refuge in the Buddha's teachings, just because we have committed to following the path, it doesn't mean that automatically, instantly, all of our problems will disappear overnight. What it means is that by taking refuge, we now have an opportunity to, to do something about the problems and the difficulties. First, by engaging in purification practices, by engaging in practices that create merit so that we experience conducive conditions in the future. We don't experience as many problems or difficulties in the future. Second, by not creating further karma, by reacting to the results of our previously created karma. Third, by when we take refuge, when we become Buddhist, when we commit to following the Buddha's teachings. The third opportunity that we get is we get to address the root causes of what creates karma for us. And that is our anger, that is our ignorance, and that is our desire. Right? So if you guys are familiar with um, the teachings, then that would mean that we get to address the three poisons, our anger, our ignorance, and our desire. Snake, rooster, and pig in one order or the other, all right? Um, that Rinpoche has given teachings, very extensive teachings on snakes, roosters, and pigs. So I do encourage you guys to go onto YouTube, to go onto Rinpoche's blog, and to look up that very extensive teaching, or to go onto Vajra Secrets and to look up the book. All right, so third opportunity that we get is we get to address the root causes of what creates karma for us, which is our anger, our ignorance, and our desire. Which means that by taking refuge in the Buddha's teachings and by committing to following the, the path of Dharma, we have an opportunity to once and for all stop creating karma and therefore end the causes of us having these problems and having these difficulties arise in our life over and over again. Now, before I continue, a few more comments came in. Hi, hi, waiting. Hi, Albert. Thank you guys for joining All right, this morning. Um, all right, so um, just a quick reminder, this is the la last episode of the early show for the foreseeable future, all right? So if you guys have any questions for me, please get them in to the comment section. And if I don't have time to respond to them in the live stream, I will respond to them after the live stream and I'll write out um, something, all right? So um, continuing on. So just because we have entered the Dharma doesn't mean that our problems will automatically, automatically come to an end. We will still have problems. We will still have difficulties. We will still have obstacles. We will still have issues and challenges. And we will still suffer even after we have entered the Dharma, even after we've taken refuge. But what entering the Dharma means, what taking refuge means, is that we get a chance to do something about them and to do something about what created these problems and difficulties so that we don't have to suffer again in the future, whether that future is within this lifetime or whether that future is in the next lifetime. And actually what Rinpoche said is that once we enter the Dharma, in fact, we should actually anticipate more problems and more difficulties arising in our life. Why? Because, number one, we pray for it. We pray, may all obstacles of others ripen upon me. May I develop the compassion, may I develop the ability to bear the burden of others. May I develop the compassion, may I develop the ability, may I be able to bear the responsibility of alleviating other people's suffering and alleviating other people's problems. So as people who have taken refuge, as people who are on the path of developing bodhicitta, we pray 
for obstacles and for problems to ripen upon us. We pray to develop the ability to absorb other people's obstacles and sufferings. So what Rinpoche said is that when we take refuge and when we, when we receive refuge, when we become Buddhist, in fact, when we enter the Dharma, we should not be surprised that problems arise in our life because we are actually praying for problems to arise in our life, number one. Number two, the great thing about having taken refuge, the great thing about committing to the Buddhist path is that now we have the opportunity to experience the results of our karma so that we can actually purify it, we can actually go through it and so that we never have to deal with it again. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example um, of, that would help to illustrate what I mean by that. Think about which one it is that you prefer. Would you prefer to experience the results of your karma in this lifetime? Or would you prefer to experience the results of your karma in a future lifetime when you have no control and when you have no ability and when you have no opportunity to do something about it, to cope with it, to lessen its effects, to reduce its impact. When would you prefer to experience the results of your karma? In this lifetime, when you have the ability, the tools, the platform, the means of doing something about it, where you have some modicum of control over it, or would you prefer to experience the results of your karma in a future lifetime when you have absolutely no control? So, example. Let's say you have a lot of body karma. What is body karma? Very simple. Body karma is karma that is created as a result of the actions of the body. Straightforward, right? Okay. So would you rather experience the results of your body karma in this lifetime in, for example, um, in a car accident where you break your arm and you end up being in a cast for a few weeks and it's itchy and it's horrible and you know you have to pay medical bills and all of that would you experience would you rather experience the results of your body karma in the form of a car accident where you break your arm and you're in a cast or would you prefer to experience the results of your karma in a future lifetime where you take rebirth in one of the hell realms and you're continuously extremely 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 hot or extremely 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 cold and you have no way out of it there is no light at the end of the tunnel there is no sense of relief. There is no hope for relief. There is no hope for respite. When would you prefer to experience the results of your karma, body karma? In this lifetime, when you can mitigate. That's the word I was looking for. I was looking for the word mitigate. When you can mitigate some of the effects and when you can cope better with the effects or with the results of this experience of your body karma. Or would you prefer to experience the results of your body karma in a future lifetime in one of the hell realms where you have absolutely no control? All right, so when we enter the Dharma, what Rinpoche said is, number one, we should actually ex not be surprised that so many problems arise in our life because we pray for it. And number two, be generate a sense of gratitude that we actually have the opportunity to experience the results of our karma now, to purify it so that we never have to experience it ever again in the future. All right, so when we are surprised that life is full of problems, when we are surprised that so many difficulties and challenges and obstacles arise, whether it's in outer or secret obstacles, when we're surprised that we are having these experiences, what is actually happening is that we are denying karma and we're denying or in denial rather of the fact that we have created the causes to have these experiences and we created the causes in a previous life to have these experiences that we're having now. Now, how? Do you deal with all of the problems that life throws at us? You deal with it by studying and by understanding the Dharma and by applying the teachings. So it's not just good enough to open a book, read the book and think, oh yes, these teachings are very beautiful. It's not enough to go into um, a teaching or a talk every week, to go into Dharma class every week and say, oh wow, how wonderful these teachings are. These words are so beautiful. These words offer relief to my mind. And then when you step out of Dharma class or when you, you, know, you close the live stream, um, you don't make any changes in your life. So not just studying and understanding the Dharma helps us to deal with life's problems, but actually applying the teachings that we learn. It's not enough to just say, oh, these teachings are so beautiful and then do nothing about it. 
it would be the same as going to the doctor's office when you're sick, the doctor giving you the medicine and you, you, you saying, oh, wow, how wonderful science is. How wonderful that there are means for me to cure my illness by taking this medication. And then you don't take the medication or you leave it on your desk and you don't take your supplements. You don't do the treatment, but you, you praise the treatment. All right. Not applying the Dharma is the same as doing that. How else do you deal with all of the problems and difficulties that come up in life? You deal with it by practicing the eight verses of thought transformation or the eight verses of mind transformation. Um, there is a, Rinpoche has given a very extensive teaching about this in the past, which is on Rinpoche's blog. The blog title is Eight Steps to Happiness. And in the eight verses of mind transformation, whenever I'm with others, I'll practice seeing myself as the lowest of all. And from the very depths of my heart, I will respectfully hold others as supreme. In all actions, I will examine my mind, and the moment a disturbing attitude arises, endangering myself and others, I will firmly confront and avert it. When someone I have benefited and in whom I have placed great trust hurts me very badly, I will practice seeing that person as my supreme teacher. So, how one way, one way that Rumichi encourages us to deal with life's problems, life's difficulties, and all of the things that come up with it is by every day reciting the eight verses of mind transformation and then applying it, familiarizing ourselves with it and then applying it on a day-to-day -day basis. How else do we deal with life problems, the surprises that you know life throws at us? By following the instructions that our guru has set for us. And one of the instructions that our guru has set for us is by doing a sadhana every day. You know, some of us may think, oh, I've never met Rinpoche in real life. I've never met Rinpoche in person. I've never received instructions from Rinpoche. Actually, all of us have. All of us as Rinpoche students have received instructions from Rinpoche. How? We receive instructions from Rinpoche whenever we sit and we receive and we listen to teachings from Rinpoche. Each time our guru tells us, offer the victory to others. Each time our guru tells us, Practice humility. If some guru tells us, don't be angry, when don't react when someone has hurt you, when someone has wronged you. If some guru tells us that, that is an instruction from our teacher. Whether we like it or not, whether it's phrased in a way, it's not our guru telling us, I instructed you to do this. But when our teacher gives us teachings, we should take it on as personal instruction. So how we deal with life's problems and the fact that we have so many challenges and issues in life is by taking on our teacher's teachings as personal instructions to ourselves. So we follow the instructions that our teacher has set for us. I'm sorry. I know that some of you guys <laughs> might have been hoping for some kind of magic bullet where I tell you, okay, recite 108 Om Mani Pemeh Homes every single day. Sponsor this puja. I know that some people may be hoping for some kind of magic bullet to, you know, like instantly, like, oh, poof, all of our problems and difficulties are gone. But the truth is, when it comes to dealing with all of the obstacles that we have in our life the only thing that is going to make it work is work and the only thing that's going to help us is by consistent effort that each time we fail each time we find things difficult each time we lose our temper each time we react each time we resist each time we feel disheartened each time we feel that we've lost hope each time we feel i can't go through this i can't do this anymore it's getting too much each time we feel and we react like that applying the consistent effort, consistent applying the effort consistently rather uh, that um, to the teachings, to applying the teachings. All right. So um, that's my sharing for today. Um, let's see what questions we have for this week. Um, okay. So Andrew said, um, Andrew asked, Pastor, I have a question. Let me just show up this question so that everyone can see it as well. Um, Pastor, I have a question. If I want to practice something, for example, Kawang prayer or Ratna Shukden, uh, Shidze, sadhana, but have great difficulties to set up a proper offerings and altar. What must I do to limit the obstacles? Okay, Andre. Um, because there are no specifics given, and if you don't feel comfortable with elaborating or with giving details, you can um, message the Kachara Facebook fan page with your query um, and the person who's administrating, the people who are administrating that account can forward it to me. But um, what I would say is start small. If you're not able to set up a proper, to set up proper offerings or to set up an altar, start with the, 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 just start. However you can, just start. 
whatever space you have, just start. Uh, when I was in university, I lived in a room and no space for a proper altar, a big altar, right? No space for proper offerings. So what I used to do was I, I bought tatas, small um, statues, figurines of Doji Shukten, of Manjushri, of Lama Tongkaba. Um, and I set up an altar. And because I didn't have space for a full set of water bowl offerings, I used to make like tiny origami offerings of like apples and like um, like gold ingots because I didn't have I didn't have the funds to do it. I didn't have the space to do it. So I used to make small origami. <laughs> oh God, I can't believe I'm admitting this on live. But I used to make small origami offerings and offer it on the altar, visualizing that they are real because that was what I could afford at the time. Um, if you can't afford a tata, if you can't afford a small, small statue, um, start by printing out one of the free images that are available on Remiji's blog um, and start there. If you can't even do that, then what Rumiji said is every single day, whenever you feel yourself reacting or whenever you feel your mind going up and down, whenever you feel that you are having so many difficulties and it's very, very hard for us to generate the will, generate the encouragement, generate the motivation for ourselves to go through with it, Rumiji said immediately stop, think, visualize, focus and recite Doju Shukden's Kanshak three times. As soon as you feel your mind going up and down, as soon as your mind, you feel your mind being unstable, as soon as you feel your faith wavering, as soon as you feel like, I can't go on, I need, I, I need help, I need support, immediately stop and recite Doji Shukden's Kanshak three times. With full faith in Doji Shukden to help you, with full focus. Don't sit there and, you know, like recite Ganshik and think about lunch, think about dinner, think about how, 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 how. Remember she said immediately stop, focus and recite Doji Shukden's Kanshak. All right, so since there are not many um, details in your, your question, which I understand you may not be comfortable in sharing, um, how I would answer your question is by saying just start. However you can, just start by what, whatever is within your means. Um, if you can't do a three-foot statue, do a one-foot statue. If you can't do a one-foot statue, do a five-inch tata. If you can't do a five-inch tata, print out an image. If you can't offer a full set of water bowl offerings, offer one. If you can't offer an entire buffet course, offer a bowl of food, offer a portion of your food every single time you sit down to eat a meal. All right, so I hope that's answered your question. Uh, your second question. Okay, uh, let's see. Second question, Pastor, this is from my friend. How a military in war zone can still practice Shukden Sadhana? Um, I, by practicing, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how to answer this. Um, Okay, let me answer this by telling you a story. Um, in 2004 or 5, um, I had the merits to go on pilgrimage with Rinpoche to Nepal. And on this trip, um, we had the opportunity to meet with um, another Rinpoche. His name, he's, he has passed away, but his name was Sao Putok Rinpoche. And Sao Putok Rinpoche was incredible because old, with respect, old, um, a very senior practitioner, but very, very simple monk. Very bright, very happy. No trace of anger or bitterness or like low self-esteem, depression, anything like that about him. So um, <clears throat> as we, you know, we had the opportunity to have an audience with Sao Putok Rinpoche. Um, our Rinpoche asked Sao Putok Rinpoche, you know, like um, about his, his life. And it turned out that Sao Putok Rinpoche had been imprisoned in a... Uh, in jail for 20 years as a result of the Cultural Revolution. And um, during this time, because of his rank, Tao Puto Rinpoche had been abused, had been tortured. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he had been made to clean the prisoners' latrines, the toilets. And um, he had been beaten, electrocuted, everything. And uh, Tao Puto Rinpoche, throughout this entire time of being abused and tortured like this, in 20 years, he never missed a single day of his sadhana. Every single day, Sao Putok Rinpoche would find some way of completing, doing and completing his sadhana without fail. And Sao Putok Rinpoche told us, you know, if other prisoners saw me reciting my sadhana and doing my sadhana every night, they would report me to the guards and then I would get beaten and my punishments would increase. But Although he, Sao Puto Rinpoche was having those experiences, he still continued with his sadhana. Now you think, compare it to ourselves, right? When we're sleepy, when we perceive ourselves to be busy, when we perceive ourselves to have so many problems and so many worries in life, 
we are like, Ugh. okay, I cannot, I cannot tahan, I cannot tolerate, I need to sleep, I need to take a break. I'll do my sadhana tomorrow or I'll do a condensed, reduced version of my sadhana. I'll go to the back section of the diamond path and I'll do the condensed version of the diamond path. I won't do the full one because I'm so tired. I've had such a busy day. I've had such a bad day. I can't think about doing my sadhana right now. You compare that with someone like Sao Puto Rinpoche who was being beaten and electrocuted with cattle prods, who was being made to clean hundreds of prisoners, a toilet that was being used by hundreds of prisoners, <clears throat> who was beaten every time people saw him doing a sadhana. Every single day for 20 years, he still did his sadhana. And we asked him, like, how? And he said, oh, I just had to figure out a way to be able to recite without moving my mouth too much. I just had to figure out a way to recite, um, uh, to do my visualizations without other people finding out. And he just said it like that. All right, so um, what I want to say by sharing that story with you or sharing that experience with you is that where there's a will, there's a way. What Rumichi always told us is that if you want to do it, you'll find a reason to do it. If you don't want to do it, you'll find an excuse to not do it. Okay, so um, I hope that that has actually been able to answer uh, your question, Andre. All right, um, a comment here from waiting. Um, we are so fortunate that we can still hear Rinpoche's teachings through YouTube or through short video clips on Facebook. Sometimes when I face problems, it's so coincidence that some teaching that's related to handle my problems will pop up on Facebook or YouTube. I know exactly what you mean, what you think. <laughs> and sometimes it's not necessarily things that are being shared on Rinpoche's Facebook, but things that are being shared by Rinpoche's students on Facebook, in other places on Facebook, right? So, um, and they come up at like the most opportune times and you're like, oh, wow. I was not expecting that to happen. All right, so yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, and also, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Zing. Uh, good morning, Mike. Hi. Hi, Pastor Shin. Hi, Daoxing. Uh, hi, Huyen. I'm so sorry. I, I tried my best to learn how to pronounce Vietnamese names, but please forgive me if I mispronounced your name. And uh, good morning, Shumaria. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, so um, we don't actually have any further questions for the time being. Um, so I think I'll wrap things up at this stage. Um, that's it for me for now. And as I mentioned before, yes, as I mentioned four times before, um, today was the last episode of the early show, um, whether that's in the form of a pre-recorded video or in the form of a live stream. So um, before I go, I do want to thank the sponsors um, <clears throat> who have been so encouraging in their support of the shows over the last year. Um, Thank the sponsors of today's sharing as well as the sponsors of all of the previous shows. Um, really, thank you so much for your support. All right. Um, I hope that um, you guys stay well, stay happy. And, um, you know, there's so many other programs. Rimichi has left us so, so many teachings um, on the blog and on YouTube um, that we should listen to and revisit over and over again. Um, because every time, each time we revisit, <coughs> excuse me, each time we revisit and listen to them, we will always take away something new. And as Waiting pointed out earlier, um, you know, it's there's no such thing as coincidence, Waiting, that um, sometimes that, that teachings um, will always pop up that are related to the problems that we're handling. Right? So there's no such thing as coincidence. But um, thank you very much for joining me today and um, <laughs> joining me for all of the previous episodes. Um, guys, stay safe. Um, take care of each other. And uh, as ever, Please don't forget to be kind to each other. All right. Bye, guys, for the last time. See you guys. <laughs>